the bottom line, Mr. Reagan and Ms. Yes, is they all want you to move out, including Olivia. And we uh, have, and no have since. I'm sorry, go ahead. We have no problem leaving the premises. Okay. It's just that we were, you know, not aware and we were trying to get the assistance and they had gone behind our backs and not made it a compromise when Patrick had let his son and girlfriend move in with us. Good morning, everyone. Today is a landlord tenant day. Good morning to everybody where it's 535 or earlier. It is Friday. We have a very busy landlord tenant day. We have a full morning and a full afternoon. We've got some general civil matters at 10 that we'll address also. Once again, Judge Patterson isn't here today, so I'll be handling any emergency bench warrants. It looks like I might need some. Another okay day, 61 degrees this morning. I rode my bike dark about at the end of that once it gets colder i won't be doing that but uh so hopefully it's good where you are uh, my friends in florida are uh, struggling right now friend sent me a picture of the parking lot at siesta key beach it's all underwater so hopefully the people in siesta key and sarasota are okay but the people up in the panhandle, uh, my sympathies for them. It's coming all the way here. It'll be here. Mr. Wolf, would you come up and have a seat right here? We're gonna leapfrog our uh, next case, which is set for nine. Uh, this one's set for nine ten, but all the parties are here. This is entitled Grant Wolf versus Gary Lewis Sr., known as Pops, and Gary Lewis Jr. Um, this is filed as a termination of tenancy for a property on Lutz Road. Mr. Wolf wants his property back and wants the Lewises to move. So let's talk about that. Mr. Lewis and Mr. Lewis. Go ahead. All right. Mr. Brown is joining us. Okay. Who is Terry? If Terry would join us, is that you, Miss Shelton? Marquita? No, I'm just an interested party uh, joining in with Andrew Brown. All right. Very good. I'll mute your microphone. Okay. I didn't know if that's Pastor Cropper or who that is. Anyway. Mr. Lewis and Mr. Lewis, as defendants in a landlord-tenant proceeding, including termination of tenancy, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. Just a second. I got an email from McBauer. She's going to be a little bit late, our legal aid representative. At any rate, you have a right to have an attorney. However, there's no court appointed attorney in civil matters. You have a right to hire one, or you can request assistance from legal aid if they are available. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Could you please remove your hat? Well, we'll deal with him in a minute. Andrew, I'll put you in the waiting room. All right. Uh, you have a right to a trial by a jury or by the judge. Uh, in fact, in the 40 years I've been here, we've never had a jury trial in landlord tenant court, but the law right does exist. If you do request a jury trial, you have to file the demand. You have to tell me today, or you have to file the demand within five days and pay a $50 jury demand fee. Unless the court waives the fee because you're unable to pay it. You have a right to have your case heard here in St. Joseph County where the property is. If your landlord has asked you to be evicted because you haven't paid rent, that's a different type of case. This is a termination of tenancy. Uh, 
they just want you to move. You may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord by going through mediation. If both parties are interested in that, the court can help set it up. You may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord that means the case would get dismissed by a conditional order of dismissal. If the parties are able to do that, the court can assist you with the filing of the form. So let's back up here. I don't have a lease in this property. Uh, this is a property on Lutz Road. Uh, the notice to quit was filed way back in February of 2024. The complaint to recover the property was filed in July, July 31st. The defendants were served and the matter was set for a hearing today. Mr. Lewis and Mr. Lewis, what's your position? Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, the rent went from eight to uh, 1400 in like three months. And uh, we uh, we just can't afford 1400 I mean, it's not even worth it. All right. We Mr. Have Just a minute, Mr. Wolf. When has rent last been paid? It was somewhere in the area of March or April. Oh no! All right. When do you believe rent was last paid? A month ago. All right. Well, all right. He can't accept rent after the notice to quit is served which is the complaint is filed July 31st. At any rate, your rent's pretty good now. It's zero because you haven't paid it in a while, but they've been asking you to move since February. Um, have you had any success with that? Uh, we're, we're closed. Um, we were, we're going to buy property, but we're trying not to rush into it. And uh, the tax sale info, the Michigan site only has so many auctions a month all right well the law says that i have to adjourn this for seven days at least seven days and uh seven days from today is next friday the fourth of october and so i'm going to adjourn this mr wolf uh because i have to didn't used to but the rules changed during covid to 150. That's next Friday afternoon at October 4th. Now, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Lewis, the law would say you have 10 days from that day, October 4th, to move out or you're subject to being evicted. So essentially, you've got till October 14th to get your property out of there or the sheriff can come put your stuff out. Now, at this point, he's not asking for a money judgment. He's asking for a possession judgment. After you move out, he can file an action either in general civil court or small claims court asking for back rent and any damage, utilities, that sort of thing. If you do move, you need to turn in your keys and give your forwarding address in writing within four days of your moving. Is there a lease? There was a handshake agreement. All right. How'd you come to have this property for rent? Did, did you inherit this property? Or you buy it as an I income property? In 2018, I lived there for a year fixing things. And I had someone staying there for a while helping me. <laughs> All right. Well, I would strongly suggest that you get a lease you're going to be a landlord, you're going to be required to follow the rules and you can do it on a handshake agreement, but a handshake agreement isn't worth the paper it's not written on. So you are also subject to a no lease agreement. But the fact of the matter is Mr. Wolf owns the property. He wishes to terminate your tenancy. You don't have a lease. He's been asking you to move since February. Um, it's in dispute as to how much rent is owed, but uh, the purpose of this hearing is for someone like me, the judge, to just give you a drop dead date where you have to be out. And that date is going to be 10 days from next Friday, which would be October 14th. So, gentlemen, you can both zoom in again next Friday at 150. Does that time work for you?
Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. All right. For you, Mr. Wolf? Yes. All right. Um, all right, gentlemen, I'll see you next Friday. If you do move, turn in the keys and give your forwarding address. Of course, if you don't move till October, we're going to have another month's rent that's going to be due that Mr. Wolf can sue for. All right. Uh, you're good to go. I'll remove you from the hearing. Are you from Constantine? I am. Are you Wade Wolf's son? I am. I went to college with your dad, so I'm the same age as your father. Oops. You went to college? Yes. At Hillsdale? No, he was at Glen Oaks at that time. Oh, yeah, he did a semester. He did a year. A full year? Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next Friday. Uh, and they'll have 10 more days to move out. But I would strongly suggest that you get a lease. And uh, there's plenty of attorneys locally that can help you do that. Uh, but... Uh, First of all, you need to get your property back. All right, you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Did you go to high school? Um, I went to Three Rivers. Your dad graduated from Constantine the same year I graduated from Three Rivers. He, he was a track star and a football star, and I was not. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. All right, good luck. All right, let's try Andrew Brown again. Andrew, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now, Your Honor. All right, very good. I'm going to ask you to take your hat off. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Good morning. And, good morning. of course, I know you, but I have to identify you for the record. You're Andrew Brown? Yes. And you're the landlord of Marquita Shelton, who lives at 17801 South River Road? Yes, me and my wife. Well, Ms. Shelton isn't here, and she was personally served. Is she still in the property? Uh, I believe so. I, I haven't talked to her in months, Your Honor. Are there others there? Uh, I believe so. Terry is here. I'm not sure who... Who that That's my is. stepdad. All right, he had interest in this. All right, well, they're not here, so they're subject to being evicted. Now, I didn't Google this. I drive down River Road often. Is this the house with all the junk out in the front of it? Yeah, it's good. Yep. How'd you come to own it? Uh, you know, uh, my wife is Thomas McGee's daughter. You know, okay. he passed away, and we just, you know, decided to man, keep the property. All right. Yeah, I talked to Thomas at uh, Miss McMaster's funeral, I think. And he passed oh, away. Thomas McGee. Yeah, I know. He was at oh. Miss McMaster's funeral. And yep. uh, he I know who he is. He went to school with my older sister. And I went to school with his sister. But everybody around here knows everybody. Anyway, uh, Marquita's got 10 days to move out. Now, okay. I suggest that you get a lease. If you're going to start renting this property to people, you need to... Um, have a proper lease. Okay. And there's a number of people that could help you with that. But anyway, she has 10 days to move out. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised she isn't here, but uh, she's not. And we called the hall. Uh, she has 10 days to move. Now, how that works, if she doesn't move by 10 days, and today is September 27th, so she has until October 7th to move. If she doesn't move, you come to the courthouse on October 8th and bring $15 and ask for a writ of eviction, and the sheriff will put her put them out. So it's Marquita and all occupants. 
Okay. All right, Elaine, will you do a judgment for me in this case? How much was the rent, Mr. Brown? Pardon me? How much were you charging as rent? Uh, it was just 1300 When was it last paid? When do you think you last collected any rent? Uh, I would say the last, it was in May. And that's just, that's the last time I even talked to her, you know, and I was trying to contact her because, you know, that's my cousin. Yes. Uh, you know, I was trying to contact her and see what was going on and, you know, telling her, you know, that, you know, I'm, I'm going to lose the property, you know, and she just wasn't responding to me and just, after a while, she just stopped answering my calls. So she kind of. Oh, she got 10 days to move or is she subject to being evicted? Oh, you're what I call an accidental landlord. So hopefully uh, yeah. this will be resolved. All right. You're good to go, Mr. Brown. Okay. All right. Thank you. And Terry, I'm going to remove you also. I'm going to bring in Jamie Kreitz and Kayla Flowers has been unable to log in. Hello, is this Kayla Flowers? Yes, it is. This is Judge Middleton calling for your landlord tenant case this morning. They told me you weren't able to log in on the Zoom, so we'll try yeah, to. Yeah, well, my phone's not letting me download it. I think it's the service. I've been trying to download it since yesterday. All right. Well, at least you started yesterday. Sometimes people start five minutes before. Is Gary Boyd with you? I don't know. He's at work. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. And he really hasn't been staying here. He, I mean, he goes on and off, depending on his mood. All right. But I've been trying to get help from the state. So I'm just waiting on their answer. All right. Let's talk about that. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Mr. Bush. Hello, Jamie. All right, Ms. Flowers, the law requires that I tell you what your rights are as a tenant in a landlord-tenant proceeding. As a defendant in a landlord-tenant proceeding, including non-payment of rent, and that's what this is, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. She's not here right now, but I expect her to be joining us shortly. She's in another hearing, but you do have her contact information that we sent to you. You have a right to have the matter heard here in St. Joseph County where the property is located. You have the right to demand a jury trial. If you want a jury trial, you must tell the court at this first appearance or make the demand in writing within five days and pay the $50 jury demand fee unless the court grants you a waiver of that fee. There's a court form, MC-22, jury demand form, which you can provide you with it if you need it. If your landlord has asked you to be evicted from a residential property because you haven't paid rent, you may be able to get assistance from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, the local coordinated entry agency, that's community action agency, 
a housing assessment and resource agency in our county, that is Neighborhood Inc. Federal Help for Homeless Veterans Program, if you are a veteran. We did send you that information with the original summons with a, a packet with a summons and complaint. You do not need a judgment against you to get help from those places. A copy of the summons and complaint from your case are sufficient, despite what they might be telling you. Okay, because well, yeah, no. they told me I didn't have the proper. All right, I'll take care of it in a minute. The proper um, paper. All right, well, that's not accurate, but all right, well, let's continue. You may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord by going through a local community dispute resolution mediation. Uh, that's never happened either, but someday maybe both parties will be interested and will help set it up. You may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord that means the case would get dismissed. The court must provide you with that conditional order of dismissal form if you need it. <laughs> All right. Your rent is... 600 per month, which is quite reasonable in our current market. Uh, Mr. Bush filed a judgment information form indicating that through September, rent is $3,800 in arrears and $218 in court costs for a total of $4,018.93. A couple. Well, that was at the time it was filed. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, 2000 was way back on June 3rd. You now owe July, August, September's rent. So there's an additional $1,800, which gives us $3,800. Um, okay. Now, a couple problems. Right now, at the end of the fiscal year, none of those agencies I mentioned, except perhaps the VA program has any money. Uh, all the money ran out earlier this fall or late summer. And October 1st is a new fiscal year, so they may have some new funding. I don't know whether you're eligible for funding or not. Mr. Boyd's on the lease. He's employed. Uh, you haven't paid your rent in full since March. And uh, Mr. Uh, Kreitz uh, would like to get his rent paid. Uh, Gary right. owes me some money in some other cases. You've got an unpaid traffic ticket. Uh, but I got an unpaid traffic ticket. Yes. Impeding traffic. File 23100623. So you should check with the court regarding that. Anyway, this has yeah. to do with your rent. So which agencies have you talked to? Um, just the DHS. And I now they're I famous at telling they're famous at telling people that they need a judgment before they can get any help, but that's not exactly accurate. Okay, yeah, because they said I didn't have the right paper. All right, well, you're about to get it. The law requires that I continue this matter until next Friday, October 4th. Gary, can you start, share the times and I can go check my calendar? Yeah, just a minute. Uh, John, I don't have you set for anything next Friday, but it would be 2 p.m. Let me go check in. Miss Flowers, by that time, yeah. October will be here and you will owe another month's rent. So it will be plus $600. So it'll be $4,400 in rent. And so you'd owe $4,618.93. Know, and at that time, if they get what they asked for, I would give you 10 days from that day to move out by October. 14. Now, I'm not sure why you haven't paid the rent since March, but... Uh, well, because I haven't been working. All right. And I'm, I'm, I am supposed to be hopefully starting at Heartland. So Your Honor, I'm... 
Is the new plant in Sturgis the trailer factory? Yes. So hopefully that goes through. All right, well, let me hold up, hold you for a minute. Mr. Bush, does that day work for you? Yes, I'm available next Friday afternoon. For All right, next Friday at 2. Now, Ms. Flowers, let me tell you some yeah. things you need to know. Uh, the only thing that will cure this is paying the entire amount. Uh, to just say you haven't been working and you haven't paid your rent since March, it's inevitable that your landlord's going to ask you to move. Apparently, Gary right. Boyd isn't very helpful in paying any of the rent. Uh, oh, that... no, because he hasn't been living here. All right. Well, then you can't expect to live there if you can't pay the rent. So you're either going to need to pay the rent or move and find uh, a new place to move to. Uh, right. You have to pay the entire amount, which will be $4,618 by the time I see you next week. So you can share that information with DHS. And let's say DHS gives you $3,000, which would be generous. You would still owe $1,618. So the only thing that will cure it is the paying the entire amount. So uh, you have uh, this week to see what you can do with DHS. And then you'd have 10 days from that day to pay the rent or move. But even though you're not making your payment, Mr. Kreitz has to make his payment. Um, and this can't go on very long or all the landlords would go belly up. So I, I will see you next Friday. I want you to continue to work on your Zoom so I can see you. But you will owe by next Friday $4,400 in rent plus court costs. Uh, is there a paper that I can get for the DHS? Uh, no, just the notice to quit. This is on uh, the YouTube channel. They can see that. Uh, but no, you don't have it. Once I will give you that paper next Friday, the one they're looking for, uh, judgment with those amounts on it. I'll give it to you next Friday, but you can share those amounts with them. Okay. So can I, can you tell me how? Um, I'm sorry. Well, I think I lost her. Miss Flowers, are you still there? All right. Uh, yes, can you give me the amount again so I can write it down? All right, $4,400 in rent. $4,400. Yeah, that not working. Um, That's how it always works. Are you still there? Yes. Um... Dang it. Hello? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, 4400 And 218 in court costs. The total through October is $4,618.93. Four thousand four hundred and eighteen. All right. And ninety three cents. Four thousand six eighteen ninety three is the total. Oh. Okay. All right. Good luck to you. I'll see you next Friday. Thank you. Nobody ever has a pen. Nothing has like a parody of trying to get something from somebody. All right. What's your name, ma'am? Connie Moberly. Well, good afternoon. Connie Moberly is here. Timothy Fox is not. Our 930 case is Timothy Fox. So let's wait a minute, see whether Mr. Fox shows up. Ms. Moberly, thank you for being here. People are certainly welcome to come in and 
just be in court like they used to in the old days. Yeah. Often we put people in the conference room so they can consult with legal aid. The legal aid is here, and so we'll just have you right here in the courtroom. The last lady wasn't able to zoom in, and I had to call her on the telephone, which is not ideal. Yeah, to be careful, I can never talk to anybody. I'm stalling. I don't know. It's a wasted two minutes. If Mr. Fox does show up, it would save me from doing the advice of rights an additional time. So that's why we're letting the clock tick. Miss Mulberly, would you come right up here and have a seat? Sure. <clears throat> Jamie, have you seen any activity with Mr. Fox? Right over on this side. No, I haven't. <laughs> Is this bent? Yep. Okay. It says defendant. All right, well, let's go ahead and start with Miss Mulberly. She's here live and in person a little early, and there's no harm in that. And then we'll see whether we're going to do a default in Mr. Fox. So we're going to address Kreitz Rentals, Inc. versus Connie Moberly and any other occupants at North Prospect Street, Apartment 3. Mr. John Bush is here on behalf of the plaintiff and Mr. Jamie Kreitz, the owner, is present. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Moberly. Uh, were you in here when I went through these rights a minute ago? I think maybe you uh, came in after that. So let me yeah, tell you. Uh, As that. a defendant in a landlord tenant proceeding, including non payment of rent, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. And they're usually here with us, but she's in a hearing in another court. But you have their contact number. You have a right to a trial by a jury or by the court. You have the right to demand a jury trial. If you want a jury trial, you must inform the court at this first appearance or file the demand in writing within five days with the jury demand fee of $50 under the jury demand form MC22. And if you can't afford the $50 fee, you can ask the court to waive it. You have a right to have the matter heard here in St. Joseph County where the property is. Now let's talk about this. Your landlord has asked you to be evicted from a residential property because you haven't paid rent. You may be able to get assistance from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, mm -hmm. a local coordinated agency, a housing assessment and resource agency, or a federal help for homeless veterans. And we sent you that information with the original packet mm -hmm. of information. You do not need a judgment against you to receive help from the places listed above, despite what the DHS may be telling you. You may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord by going through a local dispute resolution program, mediation. If both parties are interested, the court can help set that up. You may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord. That means the case will get dismissed. If that happens, the court would help provide you with a form called a conditional order of dismissal. Mr. Bush has filed a demand for non-payment of rent here, and he's given me a breakdown sheet. And according to this, rent has not been paid this year, January, February, March through September. <clears throat> May as Mr. Kreitz let you go this long, but through September, the rent is $5,891 plus court costs, there's no late fees in here, you owe $6,092.83. Uh, what's your position? Um, I've, been, <laughs> I've been working really hard. I went and got my money raised for my Social Security, so that's gone up, which is good. Okay. And I've been working with Neighborhood also. I am supposed to go see her again, Monday. I went there to this week four times because I didn't know that she only comes in on Monday. <laughs> uh, neighbor, yeah, both yeah. are. So you've been so, in the neighborhood. Yeah, again. I'm on that too. So they're going to help me out on the rent. You know, I I want to pay Jamie because he's been he has been really patient with me, and he's he, he's a good landlord. I've been there a long time. Back when uh, McNew had it. My husband broke his leg in December. And he broke it in three places in the shin bone. So he was working for Morgan Olson's and he hasn't been able to work. 
So I had been supporting the house and taking care of the, everything, you know, as far as the house goes. And uh, it set me back quite a bit because I got to the point where I just, I couldn't afford it no more. Well, I had another lady. She said, well, I lost my job. She hasn't paid any rent since March. Right. And that you haven't paid any rent this year. No, I did too. Well, we had help. I had to go to his office and sign papers for it. Well, it might have been posted as to last year, but it says that rent has not been paid in full since December. Okay, I see what he's saying. Yeah. All right, at any rate, you need to pay this or you I'm could gonna. be subject to being evicted. I'm so the law requires that I continue this matter for seven days. So we're going to continue this to October 4th at 210. Now, by that time, another month's rent will be due, another $650, mm -hmm. which right now is a pretty reasonable rent for uh, Michigan, where they're up. I can little... handle that. All right. Well, anyway, you have to pay the whole thing mm -hmm. or you're subject to being evicted. Yeah. So if Neighborhood Inc. gives you some money or DHS gives you, let's say they give you five thousand dollars which mm -hmm. is a lot you would still owe one thousand seven hundred and some dollars yeah and the only thing that cure this is paying the entire amount so you would get 10 days from october 4th to pay this which okay. would be october 14th okay so uh share this information now everybody ran out of money at, at the end of this year, mm -hmm. uh, the fiscal year starts October 1st. So I'm hopeful that Neighborhood Inc. and Community Action yeah. Agency, but- I haven't even called DHS all right. yet. All right, well, you need to get on the stick because mm -hmm. uh, Mr. we've got several of these. Mr. Price is- I've been on the stick. I got the whole list and all kinds of all numbers right. I've been calling. Okay, well, making phone calls is different than paying money. Right. You owe six thousand seven hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah, and if I'm you on don't, disability. All right. Well, if you don't pay it, you're subject right. to being put out on the street. Right. Now, during COVID, there was all kinds of emergency money, and people got their rent paid, and landlords got paid. That's all run out. Right. And so, people before that, there was no such thing. You either paid your rent or you moved. Being now, a senior helps. Well, hopefully someone will give you some help, but this is a lot of money, yeah. $6,700 of just free money to pay your rent is. Yeah, that's a little outstanding. Yes, it is. Yeah. So uh, the wolf is at the door. You've got till October 4th to pay this or being subject to being evicted. Mr. Kreitz has got a waiting list. He's got people waiting to rent his apartments mm -hmm. and he can't stay in business if he goes this long without people paying. That's true. So, all right, share this with DHS. We'll take another crack at this next Friday at 2.10. Yeah. You're welcome to be here live in person, or you can Zoom in if you want to. Okay. All right, I'll see you next Friday. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. It appears Mr. Fox has not shown up. Mr. Kreitz, it sounds like that she had been a good tenant and you've been working with her, but a whole year's worth of no rent is hard to catch up on. He's been here a long time here. All right, well, Timothy Fox has failed to appear. <clears throat> this is file number 241340LT. Kreitz Rentals versus Timothy Fox. The rent here is five fifty per month. And Mr. Bush, these sheets that you and Mr. Thornton and others do make my life so much easier. Uh, <clears throat> rent through September is five thousand forty-seven dollars. Again, five fifty is very reasonable rent for our area, with no late fee. Uh, Two ten sixty-three in costs. A total of 5248 He was personally served. Uh, I heard you having some discussion in the background. Is the defendant still there? I'm not sure, Your Honor. You're not sure? No, I'm not sure. 
Jamie, do you not feel well, or do we have an audio problem? We have an audio problem. All right, well, I can sort of hear you. But at any rate, I'm going to give you a default. Is that what you're requesting, Mr. Bush? Yes, Your Honor. So this is just through September, but the move out date will actually be October. But 5047 plus 20163 is 5248.63 due by October 7th. October 7th is a Monday. It's also the appeal date. Uh, partial payment will not cure the writ of eviction. No money judgment entered at this time and could be liable for other money damages. For example, October's rent. Mr. Kreitz, this is a big uh, bunch of arrearage that I'm sure affects your bottom line. And I think, am I correct? You do have a waiting list of people waiting to get in? Yes, sir. All right. I know that you're very sympathetic, but you're going too long with these people. Yeah, uh, I get too busy, but we did file these in June. So it's just the uh, courts are backed up also as an open. Yeah, well, I hope it's not that bad. Uh, yuck. Yeah, this got filed July 29th. They were served. I'm trying to get caught up. I don't like that backlog. It puts it on the landlords. So we've been double booking some landlord tenant cases, mornings and afternoons, to try to get caught up. At any rate, uh, you have a default judgment in this case. He has 10 days to move, or he's subject to being evicted. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Jamie. We're on to you all right. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, have I got Patrick Reagan and Tara Yesh? Yes. All yes, sir. Right. Put your cat's name. I'll put him and their name in too. That's oh, a dog. <laughs> it's a minor. <laughs> All right. Well, let me put in. That's Katie. And I have a uh, Kristen Carpenter, and I have a phone number here. Let's see who this is. I'm here. Well, what's your name? Kristen Carpenter. No, I see. You. No, there's someone who's just a telephone, and I'm trying to. I, I just people. added. What's I your just name? Joined the call, Your Honor, uh, Joshua Meyer. technical difficulties. What's your name? Joshua Meyer. Okay. Right. It's always awkward when we're by phone only, but let me get your name. Mr. Meyer is here on a general civil case. All right, well, let's address our landlord tenant case. This next matter is entitled Kristen Carpenter versus Patrick Reagan and Terry Yesh for a property on Marianne Drive, which looks like a nice uh, house from the inside. Uh, this is filed as a termination of tenancy. Uh, the plaintiff wants you to move. There is apparently no lease. And it says no payment has been made. So let's talk about this for a minute. I have not received any payments from them. Um, I actually have Olivia Hilton that is residing there as well. Um, she is the one that's been making payments and she requested to have them removed. Well, let's talk about that. 
uh, as tenants in a landlord tenant proceeding, including a termination of tenancy, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to hire an attorney. If you cannot pay for one, the court must give you information about legal aid assistance. Legal aid may be able to assist you. They're not here with us this morning because they're, they're in another hearing, but you have their contact information. You have a right to have the matter heard here in St. Joseph County where the property is. <clears throat> you have a right to demand a jury trial. You have to do it at this first hearing or file a demand in writing within five days and pay the $50 jury demand fee with the court form MC-22. Uh, you may be able to reach an agreement with your landlord by going through mediation. If both parties are interested, we can pursue that. Uh, you may be able to reach an agreement with the landlord. It means a conditional dismissal would be entered, but um, that happens sometimes. And if the parties are interested, we can help you with the form. Who is Olivia Hilton? She's my uh, son's girlfriend. I let them move in with me probably about close to a year ago. And uh, I got behind on my rent. And I was talking to Nick, not his wife. I've never met her in my entire life. Other than when she gave me a... Uh, Sir, do with yeah, an eviction notice. An eviction notice. It wasn't even a real one. Uh they went behind well, my they back. they want you to move out. No, let me stop for a minute. Is there a lease, Miss Carpenter? Uh, no, sir. What? Not with him. No, sir. That we... I I had a lease on it when I moved in there. I paid the money and I had a lease with a different guy. Yeah. Who, yes. Right. Well, do you have with a lease prior now? Owner. We do not have a lease currently with Nick and right. his wife. Um, right. We had a previous land. Uh, landlord um which we had a lease with they had purchased the property and it never came up with the lease um we had been paying them rent and we were struggling we had asked nick for um actual an actual eviction notice so we could get assistance and he had put a um writ quit or something on our door and Olivia and Andrew, Patrick's son, had come home to this lease while Nick was posting it to the door. And then he agreed to sign a lease with them, unbeknownst to us. It was not to our knowledge. We had no idea. It was kept from us. And then we it are told wasn't that we kept. Had, you guys didn't no, pay. It was never told to us that we were even um, no longer the tenants of yeah. that property. Because you need and, to pay. And Andrew right, and Olivia well. never said that. Nick agreed to it so we could provide the assistance to pay you. And we're locked out of the house right now. They changed the locks on the doors. I can't even get in there and get my stuff out. And we have all right, proof. Well, that's, all, right. That, all right. Let's back up. All right. So who is Nick? Nick is my husband. We own the property. And who did you buy the property from? Uh, Kit Lepper. So the previous okay. landlord was Kit Lepper? Yes, correct. And Mr. Reagan and Miss Yes had a lease with him? I did, Your Honor. All right. And then at some point, the notice to quit was served on the parties in June, June 27th. Correct. And they given until July 27th to move and they didn't move. So you started this action. Right. So in the meantime, you've signed a lease with other occupants of the house. Yes. No, Al Olivia was before June. She was paying us. Um, she said she was giving money to Patrick and he wasn't paying. So but my husband, is stop, stop, right, stop, my husband stop, said, stop, stop. Sorry. Miss Yesh, only one person can talk at a time. So, Miss Carpenter, you now have a lease with Olivia Hilton. 
Correct. Hilton signed when? Um, I'm not sure, actually, sir. I'm sorry. Too. Hold on one second. And is anyone else on the lease with Olivia? No. Her, their son is just with Olivia only? Correct. And it was signed on April 19th of 2024. So you signed a lease while there were other tenants in the property. Correct. With only one tenant. Correct. Uh, I'm not sure you can do that. And now that person has locked them out. That okay. violates the landlord tenant. You can't do that. Uh, in fact, the landlord can be responsible for substantial damages for locking a tenant out. So this is complicated. Um, you have a lease with someone else while they Correct. were in the house. The bottom line, Mr. Reagan and Ms. Yes, is they all want you to move out, including Olivia. And we uh, have, and they have yeah. since... I'm sorry, go ahead. We have no problem leaving the premises. Okay. It's just that we were, you know, not aware and we were trying to get the assistance and they had gone behind our backs and not made it a compromise when Patrick had let his son and girlfriend move in with us. We were trying to, you know, make it right and they had not paid any rent to us or any bills whatsoever, which we were fine with. Um, but because this had well, happened, we weren't able to get any assistance because we were no longer the actual tenants of the place because yes. it was someone else's. Yeah. So you're going to have to move. Yes. All right. The law requires that I adjourn this matter for seven days which would take us to next Friday at 2.15, October 4th. Um, now, you would get 10 days from that date to move or be subject to being evicted. So essentially, you have until October 14th. Miss Carpenter, they can't lock them out. They're lawful tenants. They're not trespassers. So okay. you need to direct whoever is in there to unlock okay. the door. You can be subject for substantial damages for not complying with the Landlord-Tenant Relationship Act. So okay. if you're going to be a landlord, you need to know how to follow the rules. And there's a okay. case called the Havanesium versus NAM that says we expect the landlords to understand the rules. Um, so anyway, okay. you have... So We're I have, have a question for you, sir. All right. What's your question? Um, if we, um, apparently there was a, a police officer dispatched out there last night, reference to, I guess, Tara being aggressive. What am I supposed to do with that then? If there's damages made or more police calls, anything like that, that are dispatched out. All right. The police call hate calls. Like, stop, stop. You locked them out of their tenancy. So they went there and they probably called the police to say, hey, we can't get into their, our house. Correct. And so I'm sure there were hot tempers. If they do damage anything, they're, they're liable for the damage. Okay. Uh, but uh, they need to have access to the premises. All right. We're going to continue this to October 4th. At 2.15, you get 10 days from that day to get your property out, which would be October 14th. And um, when you do move, you need to turn in your keys and give your forwarding address to the landlord within four days. So this is an odd circumstance, if your vision is correct. Plaintiff's vision is they got a lease with a more reliable tenant. Your version is that tenant pulled the rug out from under you and signed a lease behind your back, which frankly, I'm not sure they can do. You're a tenant. They signed a lease with somebody else while you were in the premises, but now you don't have a lease. You don't have standing and you need to vacate. You're not a trespasser. 
you had a colorable claim to be there when you were a holdover on the earlier lease. At any rate, my advice is that you try to get your stuff out of there, uh, preferably by next Friday. If not, you have all the way until October 14th. So okay. I'll see everybody at that time. Can we stay there, Your Honor, until then? There's nothing that says you can't. I'm not sure that that's a great idea. It sounds like it's it just a be, yeah. recipe for discord. But uh, yes, but legally, there's nothing legally, legally prohibiting you from staying there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. And Let's hope question. we don't have a meltdown, but yes. One more question, sir. Um, on October 14th, then, whatever's left in the residence, can it be taken out? Well, you have to get rid of eviction. Uh, but if they vacated right. and left stuff there, then yes. yes, you can remove that property. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We'll Thanks. talk about it more next Friday. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Andrew Smith versus Karen Bowers. Andrew Smith is here and Karen Bowers is here. Bat Waters Apartments versus Andrew Keith. I don't see Mr. Keith. Lolita Foster versus Larry Roberts. Ms. Taylor, which case are you here on? Your Honor, I'm here representing uh, Andrew Smith. I'm standing in for Attorney Justin Allen. Okay, very good. Uh, <laughs> let's see what our time frame is here. Uh, 1030 was... Time's uh, bent waters. 1045. We're not there yet. So let's take up Andrew Smith and Karen Bowers. Ms. Bowers, could you unmute your microphone? Uh, yeah, you got it. Okay. All right. Um, last time we were here was a week ago, September 20th. Uh, Justin Allen was here from Holland, I believe, on behalf of the plaintiff. This is a termination of uh, Grand Rapids. I think this is Rhodes McKee, Varnum. Uh, and uh, we learned that uh, Robert Smith had passed away. Andrew Smith is the trustee or personal representative. They wish uh, to get the property back and Ms. Bowers to move. Ms. Bowers indicated she hoped to be out by October 1st. Ms. Bowers, what's your position? I am um, ready to move. Um, I'm just waiting to see how much time I have just because the apartments still are not ready. So my fear was at this time that, you know, I may have needed to be out by today or through the weekend. So I'm going to have to go elsewhere. Um, All right. Well, let's, let's talk about that. Ms. Okay. Taylor, you weren't here last week, but they've built a new apartment complex in Sturgis. It's brand new. And it's going to have a steakhouse downstairs, and it's going to be a nice improvement for Sturgis. Uh, this tenant has been approved to move in there, but they're having growing pains. They had a big announcement and an open house and the announcement on the radio, and uh, but apparently she can't move in yet. As I told you last time, Ms. Bowers, you would get 10 days from today to move in which will take you past October 1st, but okay. you have until October 7th to vacate or you're subject to being evicted. Okay. I, w I just wasn't sure. I knew that, you know, we were coming back a week later, so I wasn't sure because originally she had told me that I'd be able to move in on the 26th or 27th, but now once again, that's pushed back. And, and so I'm left scrambling you know, where am I going to go now? So, right, well, you've got 10 days from today till October okay. 7th. 
Now, another okay. month's rent will be due by then, but I'm not ordering any money payment here. I'm simply ordering Correct. that you move. So let me repeat some things that I told you last week. Okay. You have 10 days from today to move, which is October 7th. That's a Monday. If you don't vacate by that day, the following day, they could come and get a writ of eviction and have the sheriff put you out. They don't have to. They have 56 days from today to ask for the writ of eviction. Um, so you need to stay in contact with your landlord. If you're going to move on the 10th, there's no sense evicting you on the 8th. But I understand that you're making a good faith effort to move. You're just being held up at the other end. Yes, um, sir. I'm not issuing any money judgment. You do have also 10 days to appeal this to October 7th. Now, let me tell you a couple other things that you need to know. I'm not entering a money judgment here. It doesn't mean you don't owe money. If they come after you for back rent or utilities or damages, we'll have a separate hearing regarding that. This simply says you have to be out by October 7th. Now, when you move, the law says you're supposed to turn in the keys and give your forwarding address in writing within four days of your vacating. Um, they're probably going to change the locks here anyway and redo this apartment. But uh, I know that you are trying to move. I take what you're telling me at face value. Uh, hopefully, you can be out within 10 days and yeah. uh, they can take their property back. Ms. Taylor, everything to add here? Yes, Your Honor. We are also requesting $3,000 in unpaid rent. Um, when she received the notice of tenancy termination in July, she stopped paying rent. So we had July, August, and September's rent. And then there was also the month of March. That was the month that Mr. Uh, Smith passed away. So the, the rent went misplaced somehow that month. And so we do have four months that she did not pay rent. All right. Well, you didn't file a complaint for supplemental money damages, so you either have to file a separate action for damages in the general civil court, or Mr. Smith can pursue it in small claims court. But once you once they serve the ten, termination of tenancy on you, they can't accept rent. So um, that was served. So anyway beware you got some unpaid rent that it appears they're going to attempt to collect they did not pay the fee for supplemental money damages to make it part of this proceeding but that does still allow them to try to collect the rent so and if you don't move until august or october there may be additional month added to that your honor i the march payment okay so this just in my defense, I've been here almost six years and have paid my rent on time. I did pay March payment. There is a um, management company that I paid the rent to. Um, she's lost my rent several times, which I've had to redo. Well, I don't need to practice Walnut here this morning. Um, okay. We'll see whether they're going to pursue March's rent, but you've yeah, got April... May, June, July, August, no. September, and potentially October. I so, paid. Okay. I right. paid well, I up until July. All right. Then maybe we're just talking about July, August, September, October. We are. Anyway, yes, we'll sort that out if we have a damage hearing. This is a possession hearing. You got 10 days to get out or you're subject to being evicted unless they grant you more time. Okay, I just I will be out by the first of October. Um, since I've never met any Andrew Smith, I will leave my keys on the counter here. Um, and that's it. That's all, right. all I. All right, leave your forwarding address there as well. All right, Miss Bowers, you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. I think she'll be out regardless. All right, Ms. Tatum, nice, Ms. Taylor, nice to meet you. Mr. Smith, hopefully she'll be out and you can take your premises back. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Your Honor. Taylor. All right, thank you. Our next matter is file number 241289.
It's entitled Lolita Foster versus Larry Roberts. Good after, good morning, Mr. Roberts. Good morning. I've got you in the conference room, not because I'm unwilling to have you here in the room with me, but Meg Bauer from Legal Aid is here with us and she's filed an appearance on your behalf. So if I need to set up a breakout room where you can speak privately with your lawyer, I can do that from the conference room. I can't do it from the courtroom. Ms. Foster is here with me in the courtroom. We were here last week and Ms. Bauer was in the background watching the proceeding, uh, but had not yet filed an appearance. Uh, I think the defendant indicated he had an appointment. Anyway, uh, Meg Bauer and Legal Aid of Western Michigan have filed a formal appearance on behalf of Mr. Roberts. Ms. Foster is here. Uh, this is filed as a demand for non-payment of rent. And the defendant was claiming, or plaintiff was claiming over $4,000 was due in the rent at $500 per month. Mr. Roberts made a number of defensive claims regarding the property that it doesn't meet the covenant of habitability, then he doesn't have electricity in his room, at least not sufficient electricity. Uh, so the one issue, the, the fact the breaker was off when we were here last week, the fan had no electricity, I don't think, in his room at that time. Uh, Mr. Roberts, is the did they trip the breaker? Is the electricity back on in your room? Um, Lolita came over on Monday, I believe it was, with a nice gentleman that did some work in my room and some work on the breaker in the basement, and now the electricity works. There is, uh, it was brought to my light that there was an additional issue in the course of this tenancy related to habitability, Judge. All right, what's the additional issue? It um, <laughs> is not in in effect at this point, but for somewhere around a period of eight weeks, the building was without heat and hot water. Uh, eventually, a space heater was provided to, I think, all of the units, which may or may not have contributed to the electrical issue, uh, but uh, the electric is in the tenant's names, and so certainly that's going to can affect the um, electric bill of the tenants and gets down to the basic covenant of habitability. No hot water and no heat in winter is a significant problem. There's also another issue in this case and that relates to, that's a real party and interest issue. As far as I can tell, Patricia Van Pelt is the owner of this property, uh, not Lolita Foster, and that the property manager is a woman named Carolyn. So there's a, a fair bit to sort out here. Yes, there is. Ms. Foster, who owns this property? Patricia Van Pelt. I'm oh, going to dismiss stop. this case. You're not the owner of the property. The owner of the property can bring the case or they have to hire a lawyer. What's your position? I manage the property. Then you are not an attorney. I've let this happen before. I didn't realize you didn't own it. I thought you owned it. Um, where is Patricia Van Pell? In Illinois. And who is she to you? Just a member. I mean, we were members of the same church. Yeah, this matter is dismissed. Uh, Lolita Foster is not the owner of the property and has no standing to bring the case. Ms. Van Pell is either going to have to come herself or what really needs to be done is you need to hire an attorney. This property is extremely substandard. I'm embarrassed that the city of Three Rivers is allowing this. How many rooms are in here? Five or six? Seven, to my understanding. Six or seven. So this is 3,000 a month or $3,500 a month for a place with improper electricity and no heat or hot water. That's not true. All right. Well, it does now. The problem is you can't represent Ms. Van Pelt unless you have a law license. So you don't own it. And so you can't file it in your name. Um, you don't do an order dismissing it. Now, Ms. Van Pelt 
is going to have to get in the game here. Uh, Mr. Roberts, there is a way to place your rent into escrow properly. And I would suggest that you work with Ms. Bauer and set up an escrow account to pay your rent into escrow. Uh, what happens if you don't do that is you spend all the money on something else. Um, but you're alleging that you don't have to pay rent because the property is inhabitable. Habitable. Maybe everybody else in there ought to file up escrow account. So you put the money in escrow, depending on uh, what comes out later, if the judge decides who owes who how much money. Judge, do you want me to do a notice of submis submission for a, a dismissal? I'm going to do it right here. Okay. Ms. Foster, I do appreciate the fact that you got the water or the, the electricity turned back on. Mr. Roberts, you still have the issue of putting too many things on that same circuit. Um, well, right now there's only three things. I've got an air conditioner, an Xbox, and a TV. Oh, and I guess my phone charger when I plug in my phone. Well, you're about to not need air conditioning much. Right. We could have saved a lot of time if I had known off the bat that Ms. Foster was only the manager of this property. And then Ms. Van Pelt can figure out what she wants to do. And I only got to the bottom of that last night, Judge. I don't routinely check. I, Ms. Foster has been here before on a couple of previous occasions. I thought she owned the place. Um, and so uh, unrepresented defendants rarely make the check. And people that aren't represented from legal aid often don't check does not own the property and does not have standing to bring this action. All right. Uh, there are other issues that I'm going to leave out of the order. I'm not going to put covenant of habitability issues and that sort of thing. Mr. Roberts, again, I recommend that you told me you put your rent in escrow. It's hard to do it right. And Ms. Bauer can help you with that. And then you'll pay your rent into escrow each month and um, Ms. Foster, did the city come out and do any sort of inspection of this since we were here last? We just had an uh, electrician there. I just had an electrician. Well, thank you for that. Are, how many occupants are in there now? Two, three, four. Including Mr. Roberts? Yes. Do you agree with that, Mr. Roberts? There are four other tenants in there? It's, yeah, it's me and three other people. All right. Well, this is going to need to get resolved. Right now, you're not paying any rent, and Ms. Van Pelt can't continue to operate this. Um, I'm not objecting to it. There are people that need housing, to be sure. And... Uh, but I want to make sure that it's code compliant. No one's going to burn up. Uh, and certainly I don't like the fact that there's no heat or hot water yes, no. through the winter. Uh, Ms. Foster disagrees with that. I guess that's not resolved. Nonetheless, she doesn't have the authority to bring this case. And so Judge, I've done it. Yes. Oh, just for your edification, I guess. Um, there's been some communication with the city inspector or the, the safe built the company that the city uh, contracts with, but all of the electricians apparently are at a conference this week or or some are somehow were somehow unavailable until next week. So they have been uh, contacted though. It's now outside the scope of this case, but uh, I thought you might appreciate hearing that. Well, the problem with that, can be counterproductive yeah. for the tenant because they could condemn the property. Uh, and if the property is unsafe and it doesn't meet other code, if it's enough unsafe, they could condemn it, in which case everybody's immediately removed. Um, that's happened before, but it is a matter of safety. I don't want, I don't want a dangerous situation. So 
uh, I guess the city will be doing an inspection. My advice to you, uh, Ms. Foster, is you talk with uh, Ms. Van Pelt. What's her first name? Patricia. Patricia Van Pelt. And Ms. Van Pelt could benefit from getting some legal counsel. Um, but this case in its present form is dismissed. Ms. Foster, if you go out to the counter, I'll give you a copy of this handwritten order. It simply says Lolita Foster does not own the property and does not have standing to bring this action. Uh, Mr. Roberts will provide you with a copy of it as well. Uh, Ms. Bauer, would you like to talk to Mr. Roberts in the breakout room as long as he's here? That or I can call him if you need the breakout room. But either no, is okay. I think we're good with the breakout room. Okay. Thank you, Judge. And I was actually hoping to come in person today for this one, but uh, I, I think I, I told you I wasn't able to cover the docket because I got stuck in a pretty terrible... Yeah, I understand you were stuck in an administrative... As it turns out, this hearing didn't take long. I thought it was going to be more contentious, so I put it last so we'd have an hour or more to address it. But we don't even get started because we don't have the proper standing to bring it. So once again, Mr. Roberts, I'm going to ask you to... Uh, hit the join button. Okie dokie. Thanks, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Foster, if you go out to the counter, we'll give you a copy of that order you share with Ms. Van Pell. 